big news for fans of weird 1970s British television. The BBC has found the nationwide report on the Hexham Heads. Kind of. It's Halloween. I'm in a clifftop Victorian graveyard by the North Sea, and I'm very happy today. You see, six months ago, I made quite a popular video about the legend of the Hexham Heads, and more particularly, this TV report. In early 1976, when I was seven, the BBC's Nationwide, its early evening current affairs show, did this terrifying report about supernatural goings-on in Northumberland. It talked about werewolves as if they were real, and it ended with a film clip of a wolfman lunging towards the screen. Here's what I said six months ago. This is Hexham. This story starts in 1971 here in Reed Avenue, where two brothers, Colin and Leslie Robson, dug up a couple of stone heads in the garden. According to the family, all sorts of spooky events then took place. The young lad next door felt ghostly hands pulling at his hair, and his mum reported seeing a half-man, half-sheep creature. The heads wound up in the hands of Dr Anne Ross, an expert in Celtic artefacts, who took them to her home in Southampton. This very respectable lady said she woke up one morning to find a half-man, half-wolf creature leaving her bedroom. Anyway, some bright spark at Nationwide thought it would be a good idea to end the report with a shot from a horror film. I think it was the bit in Curse of the Werewolf where Oliver Reed lunges at the camera. I can't be sure about that. All I know is that I screamed, bounded onto my mother's lap and sobbed in terror for a while. This morning, I woke up, I looked at X, and I saw a really surprising post from the Scarred for Life boys. Who were the Scarred for Life guys? The two blogs were about my age who've written a series of books about weird TV aimed at kids in the 70s and 80s. Everyone in the dork community, of which I'm a part, seemed to think that the film's lost. But as an article on the BBC website explains today, the film existed, but the soundtrack didn't. So, what the BBC archivists did was use AI voice recognition technology to look for the term lower part was human. And part of the soundtrack turned up at the end of a completely unrelated religious program. And so to their credit, the BBC have cobbled together what is partially the holy grail of paranormal TV segments. There's silent footage of the brother's mother, Jenny Robson. And then when we're part way through the Anne Ross stuff, the sound suddenly kicks in. It was half animal and half man. The upper part, I would have said, was a wolf. i link down below to the full report, which I'm using very sparingly here because I don't want to tread on the BBC's toes. But I will say that in a way, it's kind of a disappointment because I'm not seven years old anymore. I'm not intently watching it in the front room with my family around me, and it's not making me freak out. It's just something that I'm looking back on as something from nearly 50 years ago that was terrifying to a, to a child. But something I find quite satisfying is that I correctly identified the film clip as Oliver Reed in Curse of the Werewolf. And I think probably what happened was that when I was 12 or something, I saw the full movie on TV. And during that scene thought, oh, was that the thing that was in Nationwide five years ago or whatever? I made the video as I was passing through Hexham and I wasn't that satisfied with it at the time. And so I was surprised at how it caught on and it's had a lot more views than most of my other videos. Uh, I can only explain it as a combination of nostalgia in Britain and an interest worldwide in the paranormal. So I had hundreds and hundreds of comments and a lot of them were from people in America and Australia and elsewhere saying, dog men, dog men are real. I've never heard the word dog men before, but apparently they're werewolves. 
I tend to take a sort of skeptical, rationalist approach to these things. And my attitude is, well, how could they not be seen or caught in a modern industrial society like we have today? Um, but having said that, some of the comments that people left were very interesting. You know, I, it was one person who lived in the depths of the countryside in England, I think, was, was saying, uh, you know, I've taken my dogs for walks some evenings and we've seen some very strange things uh, that, uh, you know, my dog scared them off. And uh, in a way, you kind of think, well, well, who am I to uh, to question that? At the time I was researching, there was a lot of Googling on my part, and it led me to something called the Fortiana forums, where there was a huge thread on the Hexham heads, and I looked at it just now, and they're all very excited about this footage uh, being found and restored. There is somebody on there claiming to be Colin Robson, one of the guys, uh, or who was a young boy who found the heads. There are the bad faith actors on the internet, but I'm going to assume it's him. And he makes various comments on the thread about how the heads were evil, in his words, that he would never live in that house again, uh, even if it was given to him for nothing. And uh, again, food for thought. So I'm going to wrap up now. Thank you to everyone who has watched and enjoyed and upvoted my original video. Um, check out Scarred for Life. Check out the BBC video that's on YouTube now. And have a great day.